Hey folks, it's April Holly Smith, and I am here um, because this is a no spend January supplement. I had somebody post a question that I thought was was actually legit. They said this is a legitimate question, and I agree with them. And I felt like I wasn't able to properly answer the question without like writing an essay. Whereas I knew in like four minutes of chatting, I would be able to go ahead and explain my thoughts and reasons and um, purposes. So forgive me, I'm going to look at my computer and read this question so that you have it verbatim. So brown eyed girl says legitimate question here. I'm not trying to sound sarcastic, but how is it saving any money? Doesn't buying everything ahead and not buying for a month cancel each other out since you're just shifting your spending from one month or from that month to another? For example, if I spend $10 a month um, and plan on not doing so for a month, so I go ahead and buy an extra $5 for two months, then isn't the same as isn't it all the same spending money? Okay, so let's talk about you no know, spend a January in this context and the purpose of it. If if you have um, a $5 grocery budget and for this month and a $5 grocery budget for next month and you spend $10 this month and then save $5 next month, that totally cancels it out. That math is easy. You're just canceling it out. That's not actually saving money. Um, that is just shifting it around. The purpose of no spend January and the planning ahead is for you to do all of this within your regular budget. So it's not to spend five, ten dollars this month. So you have your five for this month and your five for next month. It's to spend your five dollars this month and do that in a way that is more frugal and more purposeful and planned. So that next month you have what you need without spending any extra this month. Thus, that $5 you didn't spend would be savings. So, um, this you know, saving is, it's, it's a muscle that you have to develop. You have to exercise it. And at first, it's really hard and it's really uncomfortable. I mean, it's like running. Dude, when I first started to run, I could run 45 seconds without, like, dying like I I mean like it was bad but I kept at it and the more I did it I got to a minute and then I got to the point where I could actually start count to 5k I mean I had to run for like four or five weeks before I could even get to the point where couch to 5k that one minute of running was like doable for me so the point of is not to s s spend extra now to save later it's to Spend your regular budget now so that you have something later. So what I want you to do is I want you to take that $5 that you normally have and be more frugal and more purposeful with it. So instead of just the regular $5, you get $7 or $10 or $12 worth of value out of it instead of just the five. So yes, we are saving. Um, it, it is the purpose. Whether, you know, that's to, to purchase something special to pay off debt. That's my, my goal is to, to pay off debt. Uh, but it, it also is a chance for you to exercise it, to, to exercise the, the, the planning and saving muscle, to exercise the frugality of it, the to learn how to be frugal, to learn when and where you can save that money. And then third, it is for you to exercise that muscle of restraint and saying, no, I've decided that I'm not going to spend this month, so I'm not going to go out to eat, or I'm not going to go to the movies, or I'm going to eat out of my pantry because that's the commitment that I made, and to practice that. Because it can be hard to do. It's it's not easy. It's a habit that we have. It's a habit that's ingrained in us. It's a habit that we always do. And anytime that you are um, getting out of a rut like that, it can be really difficult and uncomfortable. So that's the purpose of doing this. It's kind of like um, when religious people fast. 
we, we all need to eat, right? But when that need is and when the want is, is really different because, you know, if you get up in the morning and you don't eat until noon, you know, it's four or five hours, you're like, oh, I need to eat, I need to eat, I need to eat. And, you, could, you know, you're hungry. But in reality, for your body, you can actually go much longer than that. And that's why they do that 24 hours of, of fasting so that they can put aside those physical needs and concentrate on their spiritual needs. And so what they do essentially is the want of food they set aside until they really need food so that they can pay attention to their spiritual situation or or lives or spiritual focus. So their the need for food really isn't at 4 hours from the last meal. It's really 24 hours or 36 hours in reality. It's very uncomfortable. Um, and it, it's out of our comfort zone. It's not a lot of fun, but that the need is different than the want. And that's a lot of what, um, the no spend of January and the no spend, no spend timber are about is, is learning where that need and that want are. And, and for a time moving that need back. So I don't want you to spend $200 this month and then be in the hole until next month when you can recoup that $100 because you didn't buy whatever. That's not the purpose of no spend of January. The purpose of no spend of January is to to exercise that planning muscle and say, hey, this is what I need. This is what I want. Write it down. Do all those things. Understand what it is. Then it's to to use your frugal muscle so that you learn to live within your means and learn to have more within your means. I want to say more about that, but I don't want to, I don't want to, I, I want to continue. I need to do all my points. And, and then the third is that point or is that muscle where you, the no muscle. No, I said I wasn't going to do that. No, I'm not going to do that. That restraint, learning and practicing restraint. So that is the purpose of no spend January. It's not to spend a whole bunch of money now and then only recoup it later. Um, I suppose you could do that, but that smacks of possibly getting into debt and then not using your restraint muscle and then it being bad, like ending up in the hole and nobody don't do that. Um, but you know, here in the United States and here in, in the developed world, we have so many resources and we have so much, we don't really want for anything. Um, and this is one of those times where we can practice a little bit of restraint and a little bit of, no, I'm going to wait on that and, um, redirect some of that money, some of that time and some of those, uh, those energies into, a focused purpose. So while it is different, it is parallel to a religious person fasting and not accepting food for a specific amount of time to gain a spiritual benefit. And this is very much like that for your, for your wallet. This is a financial fast so that you can focus that fine those finances on something else and receive a finance benefit. So I hope that answers your question, brown eyed girl, because it was a great, great question. And it makes me think maybe I wasn't as clear as I needed to be in some of my explanations and some of my um reasoning. So this is a great thing to share with everybody and I'm glad you asked it. I appreciate your I appreciate your watching and I appreciate your listening in. So anybody else, if you have questions or comments, I will do my darn diddly arndest to, to answer them and to um, see what if I to meet the needs of my audience because I want you to be successful. I want you to I want you to be the best that you can be and this is the one this is something that I'm doing 
And if you can do it along with me and become a little bit better in an aspect, gee whiz, I sure do want you to come along. That would just be fantastic. So thanks for watching. Of course, comments down below. I love comments. Yay. And um, of course, click like. Those are awesome too. Subscribe so that you stay up on all the adventures for No Spend January, all of my grocery shopping and hauling. And hey, thanks for watching. I'll see you next time.